Hey, today I will show you how you can obtain a free vector graphic from Reactome and edit it for your work in line with its original license. At times, you need to build up a vector graphic illustration from scratch. In certain cases, you already have parts of things existing out there in the web for free, and you do not want to waste days trying to illustrate the same things when you do not have the right expertise. Now, guess what? There are libraries of vector artwork available on the web for free or to be traded off with you entering your email address. We are going to see how to source vector artwork from such libraries and edit them. The first link is reactome.org. If you have used this site before, you will know it could be used for visualizing and interacting with biological pathways, analyzing pathway data, finding pathway and network patterns related to diseases, and much more. But relevant to this video seminar, if you come up here where it reads community and hover over it, you will find different menus. The first one named Icon Library is what we are interested in. I select this and we will land on this new page, reactome.org slash icon minus lib. It is relatively new and has over 1,250 vector components at the time I am making this video. And other link is smartsevier.com, which provides medical artwork completely cost and royalty free for any use with Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 on ported license. I have a link for you in the description to explain what Creative Commons license means. It is presently at 4,301 custom-made vector illustrations for most especially organs that will be hard to do except you have attained a high level of expertise. Another link is ian.umses.edu slash symbols which provides completely cost and royalty-free artwork for any use with attribution except redistribution or sales. At the time I am making this video, it has 2,954 custom-made vector symbols. Here, you will need to trade off your email addresses for downloading vector artwork. I have all of these links for you in the description section below. In this video, we are going to talk about how to obtain artwork from the first link and edit it. This will be usually simple line vector artwork. In a follow-up video, we are going to talk about how to obtain artwork from the second link and edit it. These are usually going to be organs that are very hard to draw by ourselves. And most interestingly, some look three-dimensional. So, knowing these pages and other similar pages and the techniques will be a game changer for you. You could just go there, pick up blocks of vector artwork and build up excellent illustrations. Let us go back to this first link, reactome.org. Click on about to see more information about the project. It was founded in 2001 with the goal to provide intuitive bioinformatic tools for visualization, interpretation, and analysis of pathway knowledge to support basic and clinical research, genome analysis, modeling, systems biology, and education. Here you see you could access different types of artwork. Let us click on them one by one and see what they have in store. Click on arrows and you will see some custom arrows you could download and edit for your work. I take the back key, click on cell elements, look at that, actin filament, adherence junction, amyloid fiber, apoptosome, etc. There is just a lot you can source from. Isn't it beautiful? Awesome. I take the web page back and then you have illustrations for cell types. I click and we scroll a little. Look at that. Illustrations for compounds. Illustrations for human tissue. Illustrations for proteins. 
illustrations for receptors, illustrations for transporters, and the list will surely keep on growing as this is an open source project with many contributors. Click for example on human tissue. Let us download and use the icon for a man. I will scroll down the page to find the icon on the lower right side. Click on the icon here and you will see a next page showing you different download formats. And these are SVG, EMF, PNG. Clicking on each format will open up the image in the chosen format. From our previous tutorials, we have learned that the vector formats here will be SVG and EMF. Click on SVG to download and the file will open with Inkscape if you have this free program installed on your computer. This dialog window will come up and I am going to choose OK to open. You will now have this artwork showing up. If you select it, copy and take it to a new page, you can now edit your image. In certain cases, copying to a new page lets your image to be black. In that case, just go to Object, Fill and Stroke, set the fill to Known, the Stroke Paint to Flat Color, and then Black. And under Stroke Style, you can now adjust the width of the line like this. If you go to Object on Group, you will notice you can pull an other object lying on top of an other. This can be due to the way the objects were created or it could be that the second copy of the same object is used for the color fill. Clicking on top and judging by the number of nodes, I think the author used the trace bitmap tool in Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator. We have seen before on this playlist how to use the trace bitmap tool in Inkscape. With this tool, you can create your own vector art from a bitmap image. For example, you can draw this man by hand, make a picture of it, and create a vector artwork out of the image. At times, when you download artwork with color from this site, you may have some color changes in the final download. Let us go to Receptors, scroll to the fifth row, and click on Crypto to download. Hover over here and select SVG. Then click OK here to open. As you have noticed, the objects have a color gradient. You may have both objects opening up smoothly. At times, however, the color gradient of one may be distorted. In such a case, we could use the one object that is still fine and reflect it to get the other. Select the object that is still fine. Take Ctrl Z to duplicate and while holding down the Ctrl key on the keyboard, pull the duplicate to the side. Now go to Object, flip horizontal and position it where it should be. Assuming you did not have a copy like here which can be simply duplicated and flipped around, you will need to master how to use color and color gradients in Inkscape. Here the simplest way to create a gradient would be to first select object and use this gradient tool here or the keyboard shortcut Ctrl F1. Click on the gradient tool to select. Then click on one side of your object and pull the other direction to create a gradient. I have a video link in the description showing you how to create and manage color gradients in Inkscape. And of course, you can select and scale all these objects to the size you want them to be. One thing I want you to realize is that all these objects have a stroke which is the outer outline and a fill which is the inner color. Select one of the objects and go to Object, Fill and Stroke, Stroke Paint and you will see it goes to black. Here you can change the stroke color to any color you wish. If you go to Stroke Style, you can change the thickness of the stroke. In the images you saw, the stroke paint has been turned off by selecting Stroke Paint and then selecting No Paint. 
I hope to have given you a brief introduction to how you can download and use images from React Home. If you have been using the previous videos to learn how to draw figures and do illustrations, please comment below and share your experience with those who are starting right now. Especially, let us know which other sites you know where you can obtain free vector artwork. If this is your first time here, I would like to have you give a thumbs up and subscribe below because this video series is all about helping you to effectively illustrate and communicate your research results or work. And this is going to change your study and work life positively. Otherwise, see you in the next video where we will visit another website with dedicated vector graphic images for medicine like human body parts and organs. Bye-bye.